This past weekend, I was at the 26th Autour Film Festival in Belgrade, Serbia. It was my first time watching a film inside a cinema in a couple of months, and due to COVID, the festival was expanded by two extra weeks, so it gave the audiences the time and space to experience it all as safely as possible. I was skeptical at first if the festival will be held at all since the surge of COVID-19 cases has been steadily increasing in Serbia. But I have to commend the festival organizers for pushing through and making sure the festival continued in the safest possible way. I'm sure everyone who goes to the cinema to see an art film knows the experience of walking into an almost empty theater. I've been going to the Autor Film Festival for the last couple of years and every time I've been, the seats have been full. It is one of our most exciting festivals and over the years it developed a truly dedicated audience. So this time when I went to the first screening, I was a little taken aback when I saw the almost empty theater. The last film I saw in theaters was Nolan's Tenet, which I didn't enjoy at all, and the cinema experience did not help it either. So this time, I bet all my money on films that stood a chance of creating an exhilarating cinema experience. My surest bet was Gaspar Noé's newest film, Lux Eterna. I'm a huge admirer of Noé, and I know that every time I see one of his films, it is going to be an unforgettable experience. His films are made for the big screen, and although I know that watching movies on a big screen is not possible for everyone at the moment, it is still my belief that you are never going to regret spending your hard-earned money on a ticket when you go see one of his films. I was in Cannes when this film premiered, and it created a lot of buzz around the festival, which isn't anything new when Noé premieres a film there. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to see it, but almost a year and a half later, it came to the festival in my country, so I couldn't miss the opportunity. Lux Eterna is a short film, running around 55 minutes. Its runtime surely doesn't make it less of a film. At times it feels longer than an hour, which is not a bad thing in this instance. It is a love letter to filmmaking, but also a weird and twisted parody of it. It follows actresses Beatrice Dahl and Charlotte Gainsbourg, who play themselves in this colorful alternate reality. Beatrice is making a film about witches starring Charlotte, and we get to experience a day of shooting a crucial scene in the film where Charlotte's character is being burned at the stake. The film starts out with a quote by Dostoevsky, who tells us about his transcendental experience right before having an epileptic seizure, which indicates right at the start that Lexi Turner is also going to be a transcendental experience on a film set. Throughout the film, we're shown a couple of other quotes by famous film auteurs like Carl Theodor Dreyer, Jean-Luc Godard, Rainer Werner Fassbinder, who speak on the nature of filmmaking and their desires to make their films art, as well as darker and more disturbing perspectives on filmmaking. Lux Turner walks a fine line between real life and art, drama and comedy, thriller and horror, and it does that all in just 55 minutes a feat many directors cannot achieve in films twice as long. I love the way Gaspar uses camera work in this film, shooting the same scene from two different angles and presenting them both side by side throughout the film. So when the two characters who are speaking come into contact with each other, it makes us hyper aware of the fine line that separates them, a line finely tuned and created by the artists behind the film. He introduces us to all the chess pieces that make a film and all of the excruciating hard work that it takes to make it. As we dwell deeper and deeper into the chaos and hysteria of the film set, we are made aware of the price actors, directors, makeup artists, cinematographers, and all the other members paid to create something that looks or feels real and honest. Filmmaking is not a happy art, as Tarkovsky said it, because it depends on money and so many different people. All of them have to be on the same page at the same time, despite coming from all different sorts of life. It requires them to create a bubble in which they can work and explore the world freely. But this is still a Gaspar Noé film, and none of that seems to come to fruition. Every second, things start falling apart from the top down. The director, played by Beatrice, starts losing control of her film and her mind as well drifting further and further away from her actors and producers. It creates a domino effect which catapults the whole set into a burning disaster. Noe knows how to make the audience uncomfortable. It is paced very well and each scene fuses with one another to the effect of everything being in one single take, even though that couldn't be further from the truth. This film is great at making you feel like everything that is happening is somehow accidental. It shows how even a disaster can be a blessing in disguise. It is all up to the filmmaker who can see the truth behind it all. The music, although rarely used, created some really memorable scenes, like the effect of Giuseppe Verdi's The Esire playing behind the burning crosses, or Chopin's funeral march in the closing credits. He uses all these classical pieces made famous by the great films which he references all the time to a great effect. 
He flips them and gives them an ironic, but at the same time a very serious tone. Like, we know what to expect when we hear a certain composition, our minds are programmed to go to a certain space when those notes hit, but he makes them fresh and fun. What I didn't expect was to be crying laughing at certain points in the film. Even though the hysteria on the set becomes stronger and louder, comedy never stops. I love the blending of the genres and the fun approach to the subject matter. I could tell that all of them had a blast making this film, even though the complete opposite was presented to us. The lighting and cinematography are once again amazing, the last part of the film especially, which depends almost entirely on the lighting. It is striking and bewildering and you can't stop looking at it. It is not as violent or as disturbing as some of his previous films, but it does have to come with a trigger warning for people with photosensitive epilepsy. The film tries and succeeds in my opinion in creating a visceral, visually stimulating drug trip. If you ever wondered how it feels to experience an epileptic seizure, this is the movie for you. This is definitely a film which will delight many cinephiles and Gaspar Noé fans. It shows Gaspar's love and appreciation for the history of cinema. It is riddled with clues and references to great films and it pokes fun at them and the entire film industry. I see it as a document of the hard work of auteurs and cinema workers all across the globe. It shines a light on those rare moments when the film camera can bring out something more truthful than life itself. The second film I saw at the festival was Michel Franco's New Order. It is a Mexican thriller set in a dystopian future, or 2021, which from today's standpoint isn't far from the truth. It is an interesting approach to an already explored genre. This was my first time watching a film by Michel Franco, so I didn't have any frame of reference. I went into it completely blind. I heard some very good things about one of his previous films, Chronic, which has been in my watch list for quite some time now, but this feels like a departure for him. I can see he had a much bigger budget this time and a more ambitious story to tell. The story follows an upper class couple in Mexico who is celebrating their wedding amidst a civil unrest happening across the country. The underprivileged rise up and start holding everyone at the party as hostage. This is a clear and straight to the point movie about class and the disparity between the rich and the poor, but it still has some very gripping moments that make it worthwhile. At the same time, the story, however familiar and common, also lacks any real character or backstory. We are thrown into an already exploding time bomb, but are left completely uninformed about its origin. I understand that the director probably wanted to tell a more universal tale, so he didn't give us a backstory behind the commotion, but I believe that it really hindered the film. Take Bong Joon-ho's Parasite, for example. It also tells a story about the tension between the classes, which is universal, but he gives it flavor and an original point of view which makes the audience more invested. In this film, that wasn't the case. I really liked the acting in the film, with the main actress Nayan gonzalez Norwin being the highlight. Her character is the most likable and developed in the film, while almost every other character is a stereotypical rich idiot who cares only about themselves and their trivial lifestyle. I was amazed by some of the bigger scenes involving a lot of extras on the streets and interesting production design it was very believable and it made for a great visual metaphor of the inner turmoil between the classes. It is a disturbing film and it does not hold your hand. It is confronting you with the devastating reality of a broken system in which everyone is fighting for themselves. Characters die in a matter of seconds without music, without pity or melodrama. It is cruel and unflinching and it makes the audience a part of the film. I do have to say that it was rather predictable at times. My only other real qualm with the film is that it never had me on the edge of my seat. I saw the ending coming from miles away, even though it tries to switch up the dynamics of the story. Unfortunately, it was apparent that the film fell victim to its ideology and political beliefs, of which I have nothing against, quite contrary. But it just made the film itself a little more conventional and bland. It wasn't anything new or exciting. I can see how this film can divide the audiences. It is a film I do recommend people see because it is still an engrossing experience. I like the cinematography and editing. I think it helped the story feel more interesting. This definitely made me want to watch his previous films and see what else he has to say because he definitely is a voice that I want to keep my eye on. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel.